how bad is the situation down in Haiti after Hurricane Matthew? Uh, the south of Haiti took a, a pretty bad hit. It has to the point that you can't really use roads. The roads are, are gone. So now they had to use, um, excuse me, because I, I forgot what type of helicopters. I call them Blackhawks, mm -hmm. but I might be wrong. Um, when we finally, we first got there, we started seeing those come in and out, in and out. But they was going to different parts of Haiti that didn't have a way to get into those parts of the country. And I was just so happy to, to see that we mobilized this time to, to make sure we get all the supplies and everything out. And I understand there's a lot of people out there that much need of help, supplies, even uh, medical medical things. But we, we see we see things coming together slowly but surely. And that's that's number one part. We see everything coming together. We see people from around the world trying to help donate, put things in, and that's a blessing. How about personally for you? I know your dad's from Port-au-Prince, and uh, going down there as a football player, a celebrity, uh, a lot different probably than you imagined your first trip to Haiti. Uh, is there an experience with, with an individual there that you had that you're just going to remember from this trip and knowing that and how much help these people do need? I'm going to have many, many memories. Just getting there and just seeing the people greeting us, taking pictures of us. And I, at one point, I'm forgetting, like, I'm a football player, but I, I'm only thing I'm thinking, we're coming here to help and to bring supplies and make sure the, the people of Haiti are getting better slowly but surely. But my one memorable thing, and I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing, it was a, one of the women that worked at the hospital, and I was asking her, like, what is one of the hardest decisions you have to make in this hospital during this time during the storm? They don't have all the, the, the needs. They don't have all the IVs, blood banks. They don't have certain things that we have here in America. So she was telling me the hardest thing for her, for her and her staff has to do, if a family comes in and somebody need medical attention and they don't have a certain thing, they literally have to tell you, we can't, we can't accept you. And, and, and you can almost, you can hear her voice start cracking and she's about to shed a tear and she's sniffling, but I, I just wanted to know like what can be that hard a decision, but I can never put myself in that shoes to be able to have to tell a family member or tell somebody who walks to a hospital that needs help that we can't accept you. Yeah, absolutely heartbreaking. I know you're doing your part. We had the special cleats during the game yesterday. What can other people, NFL fans out there, do to help? Uh, get online. You got uh, American Red Cross. They, they, they was there. So we seen one of their big, heavy uh, planes there. Uh, Project MediShare. Go online. You can look that up. It has all the instructions and everything, what you could pack up, what you could send. We, we need everybody on this. We need everybody in the world to, to help out. We took so many blows. We took from earthquakes to hurricanes every year, but at the end of the day, we still doing everything with a smile. Josh Norman says he's tired of getting fined and just wants to have fun playing football. The Redskins cornerback was fined in week four for mimicking a bow and arrow shot after an interception.